welcome to another Health Essentials Podcast. I'm John Horton, your host. We all understand that keeping the muscles in your body fit and strong requires work, but the same concept also holds true for your brain. The brain is an amazing organ with the ability to change and adapt throughout your life. The fancy medical term to describe this process is neuroplasticity. To put it more simply though, it's a constant rewiring of your brain to meet new demands. This evolution is healthy, and it's something you can achieve through regular mental exercise. We asked psychologist Grace Twork to join us today to serve as our brain workout coach. Dr. Twork is one of the many experts at Cleveland Clinic to pop into our weekly podcast to help us become better versions of ourselves. So with that, let's get ready to flex some mental muscle. Dr. Twork, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, I always know that we're in for an interesting conversation when you stop by. Well, I appreciate you having me back. It's so great to be here. I love being a part of these. Well, we love that. And we love that you, you, have the, you make the time to come and join us. So uh, we've chatted about the brain before on the podcast. And it just, it amazes me how much is going on in this three pound mass that's sitting inside our skulls. Um, it's a pretty complex system that we've got going on up there, right? Absolutely. I think that that's like to, to put it lightly, right? There are so many complex things going on inside this uh, organ that we don't even actually ever get a glimpse at, right? We don't. We just know it's up there doing its thing uh, all the time. And and I guess that's kind of what we're talking about today. This whole, I, this, this concept, uh, I guess, neuroplasticity and, uh, so tell us what's what's happening inside of our noggins with this. I mean, it, it makes it sound like our brains are like a supercomputer that's constantly being updated. <laughs> I think it's a great way to put it. And when we actually are speaking about neuroplasticity, we're kind of referring to the capacity that our brain has to adapt and to respond to new or novel experiences. So this can actually occur across many different levels within our brain. So morphological alterations or changes in structure or even like the generation of new neurons because of these experiences. So really neuroplasticity just kind of speaks to the flexibility and adaptability of our brain throughout our life. Well, that, that's a perfect way to explain it. So is the is the brain's ability to to continually readjust like this the reason why we're able to i mean to to learn to to love to analyze to mentally recover i mean you basically do all the things that kind of make us human it certainly plays a large role so these kinds of adjustments that our brains make are really functional right or structural and they allow us to adapt to new environments to learn new things and to even maybe recover if we've sustained some sort of injury so what is it is it just changing the way you're you're thinking of things or is it just kind of i mean reprogramming over and over and over again so kind of reprogramming and something that our brain kind of does on its own in response to us giving it new experiences or new stimuli per se right so when we are showing our brain new things or teaching it new things over time, it begins to kind of adapt on its own, which is really cool when we think about it. It's like it's doing its own thing to help us out. So so what are the kind of the real world applications of, of neuroplasticity? To circle back in terms of what I kind of just referred to, like sustaining an injury, I think that would be one of the most applicable or helpful real world applications of neuroplasticity. And so what I mean by that is, for example, if someone sustains a traumatic brain injury, there might be structural injury or physiological changes as a result of maybe an external force to the head, right? And this can result in tons of different symptoms. But our central nervous system, which houses the brain, has that ability to recover and adapt, which really stems from neuroplasticity. So recovery in itself often occurs in the context of working with a physical therapist, an occupational therapist, a neurologist, right? And they're able to assess the symptoms that you might be experiencing and give you a set of exercises that assist with that neuroplasticity. So for example, if you're experiencing dizziness, a vestibular therapist can actually give you a set of exercises designed for your brain to strengthen these abilities form those neural pathways to reduce that experience that you're having of dizziness wow. following an accident, which is really, really cool. And kind of in a sense, 
when we think of taking a medication, right, when it comes to physical or occupational therapy, doing these exercises over and over to allow your brain to practice is kind of like taking your medication, right? It's kind of your prescription for how we allow neuroplasticity to, to take advantage of it, I should say. So, so if there's an injury, does your brain almost kind of create its own workarounds to kind of, I guess, overcome whatever happened? Sometimes it will create its own workarounds. Sometimes it will play to strengths that you already have. And sometimes if there are areas of weakness, that's exactly where physical therapy and occupational therapy can come in, right? To give you exercises that can help strengthen those areas that may have been impacted. What about learning new skills? I mean, does, does neuroplasticity kind of fit in with that too? Certainly. I think a lot of times when it comes to learning new skills, we kind of think, oh, kids, they're like sponges, right? Like they can learn anything, they soak it all up, but when we get to this certain age, we just can't do that anymore, right? But I don't think we're giving our brains enough credit there. It might take a little bit more practice and a little bit more time, but if we actually challenge our brain, then we're really playing into that neuroplasticity, right? So for example, you wanna learn a new language? Well, luckily it's 2023 and there's millions of apps for that sort of thing, right? So the more that we engage with our brain and give it those new and novel experiences, that's how we can help to learn and to grow in that sense and, you know, gain a new skill. Now, what about memory? Because I think we all, you know, the older we get, I, I just, I always tell my kids, there is a lot stored in the filing cabinets up here. And sometimes you feel like you just, you can't fit more in. I mean, do we have an endless, I guess, uh, area that we can keep putting in these new skills and new thoughts and, and new ideas and just continually build on it? I would say rather than an endless store, it's more kind of like a commitment to practicing these sorts of things, right? So for example, if we want to promote our cardiovascular health, we maybe exercise more, we go for a walk, we go for a spin on the Peloton, right? If we want to flex our brain in that way, it's about regular practice practice of these skills, right? So if you are finding certain things challenging, for example, in the in the memory arena, or we're having some difficulties, finding ways where we can practice. So maybe that means, well, now I write a list to make sure before I leave my house, I have all of the things I need. And I practice that list and I incorporate that list into my routine, right? That can help aid us. So we're not forgetting things and getting frustrated, but then we're practicing a new skill and we're doing it often, right? And then probably memorizing that list will come along with that if we do it enough to. <laughs> so, so it sounds like what you're saying is we can constantly kind of kind of update our, our brain, and that's that's a lifelong thing if 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 you stay at it and focus on it. Yes, and kind of like what I said way at the beginning when I was defining neuroplasticity is that it comes from new experiences, new or novel experiences, right? So if we give our brain new experiences, that in itself can actually help when it comes to, to flexing our brain muscle per se. And so this might feel like, oh, does that mean I need to travel across the, the world or develop an entirely new hobby? But it doesn't mean to be that complicated. It can actually be quite simple. For example, trying a new route to work or the grocery store and not relying on the GPS, right? Um, trying an exercise class with a friend that's totally out of your comfort zone and maybe you aren't used to like Zumba or, or kickboxing, right? But we're flexing new muscles, having new experiences, which really promotes neuroplasticity and promotes our brain creating these new paths. You mentioned a little bit earlier how everyone refers to, to kids as being like sponges and, and constantly learning and doing new things. And I think as, as I've gone on in life and, and raised you know, three children, you realize that they are, they're, they're forced to do that because they're constantly being involved with new things, new classes, new, um, new, new teams, new, new everything. And, and their whole world changes every year. Whereas you hit adulthood and uh, I hate to say a lot of us, we, we fall into ruts. Um, do those ruts affect neuroplasticity? In a sense, right? Because neuroplasticity comes from those new experiences. So I love what you said about kids. So many things for children are novel, are new, right? We've never experienced first grade. We've never experienced yeah. <laughs> these things before, right? So if you do feel like you're in a rut, a great way is to try something a little bit new. And that can have benefits across the board. So certainly if we kind of stick to our ways, stick to our routine, 
we might not be taking as you know full advantage of neuroplasticity as we could be if we threw something a little new into the mix every once in a while. All right. Well, that leads us right into our our next our next part here, which is uh, let's have a little bit of fun and kind of talk about how we can work out our brain and kind of stay a little more mentally fit. Uh, what tips do you have for us? Sure. So like I said, trying a new route somewhere without relying on that GPS, which I think all of us, myself included, <laughs> very guilty, right? Yeah. Especially with ways when it's telling us like where traffic is, right? But challenging ourselves that way. Or if we have a route that we stick to in like at work, for example, if we typically walk from A to B, Let's throw a loop in. Let's go down a floor and back up the stairs, right? Let's try listening to some new music. Try cooking a new meal that requires you to follow steps when maybe you have a typical set of spices that you might throw into the mix, right? So anything where we can explore adding a new step, doing something a little bit different, taking a new direction, any way we can find a new or novel experience that doesn't have to feel like something different. But hey, if we can go on a trip across the world, that I can also recommend that too, I'll say. <laughs> no, if, only, if only it was that easy. I wish I had that in, in, in my budget. Um, what about, I mean, we talk about working out and physical activity. Does, does that also go hand in hand with some neuroplasticity? Certainly. There's a lot of benefits that come with exercise, neuroplasticity being one of those things, right? Especially if we're trying a new exercise routine, our body's engaging in new movements. So once again, new type of experience, right? We're gaining um, experience physically, which helps our brain too. There's lots of studies that point to exercise as having tons of benefits for our brain, even beyond neuroplasticity. So certainly exercise, always, always a good idea for, for any area that we're trying to improve. Oh, what about, I even saw some things where they said sleeping, which you don't think of as going to like somehow recharge your, your, your brain or help you uh, help with that. Uh, but that, that can also help. Certainly. If we think about sleep, sleep is a time where a lot of the information from the day is being consolidated. Right. And I have to bet if any of us reflect on a day where we had maybe not so great a night's sleep, you know, the day before we're feeling it the next day, right? We don't feel focused, we feel a little bit foggy, right? So certainly trying to attain good sleep. And when I say good sleep, I mean good quality sleep. So getting to bed when we're feeling tired, minimizing awakenings if we can, and if we are awake, trying to engage in relaxing activities until we feel sleepy enough to, to get back into bed. Absolutely. That helps our brain. That helps our body. And I think you can kind of see how all of these components come together, right, to, to really have an impact on our overall well-being. Definitely. Um, now here's the question. How often should you try to add something new into your routine? I mean, is it something you should look to do once a month? Is it just when you kind of feel like you're in a rut or, or should you try to work it into, a, I mean, your, your daily routine? You know, I don't think there's a perfect answer here. But I think trying to incorporate something new whenever you can, right? Whenever we can find a way to, to jazz something that we already do up a little bit, that can add some fun to our lives too, right? So I think the biggest thing is to not make it a chore in that sense, right? Where it's like we're trying to do this in a way where it's fun, where we're kind of taking away from our usual routine, right? So as often as we can in ways that can, you know, contribute to our quality of life and make it enjoyable to do these sorts of things. What do you tell people who maybe have a, a little bit of a fear of, of kind of getting outside of their normal comfort zone? Because I, I have a feeling that's a lot of what keeps us from kind of uh, trying these new experiences. Absolutely. You know, what I would say is that all progress, no matter what it is, comes with some sort of setback, right? We're normal human beings. And it's perfectly normal for progress to not be linear. A lot of times we expect that if we're going to try something new, if we don't master it right away, that that means we failed. But not at all, right? If the goal here is to be improving our brain's functioning or working towards neuroplasticity, the real, the real important piece is the new experience, not how great we are at it, right? So being kind to ourselves laughing at ourselves if if it's, we're not perfect the first time that's okay right because having the new experience is what really counts here and our brain will benefit from that no matter how great we are at this new thing that we try
I laugh at myself a lot because I try a lot of new things and I fail miserably at first. So <laughs> it, I guess it's all part of the journey, right? Absolutely. I love that. Well, You've given us a lot to think about, Dr. Twark. So be, before we kind of let our brains go into a bit of a, of a cool down mode, um, is there anything else you'd like to share with us regarding neuroplasticity? I really think my final thought for the day is just to be kind to yourself, right? Have new experiences, have fun, and allow yourself to have that fun and know that it's benefiting your brain and your body. Best advice you could give. So thanks again for joining us and uh, I look forward to having you back on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Change is good. Net theory extends to how your brain functions. Working your mental muscles by learning new skills or taking in new experiences can keep your brain in tip-top shape throughout your life. Till next time, be well.